Yeah, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Nehemiah, aka Neo. And as you can see with some of the tabs that I pulled up, we are going to be talking about the MVPs, the Rookie of the Years, the you know, six man, you know, the awards for the year so far. You know, it's only been 20 games, but I think that we have a at least good grasp on some of these teams so far. Uh, and that being said, we should always wait until what the seventh 70th game of the year to really like designate who's this award going to that being said but this is just going to be more of an early season type of thing you know people did this for Stephen curry last year where he was obviously the unanimous unanimous mvp excuse me of the games 20 games into the season last year so let's just talk about some of these awards uh i'm going to be talking about the mvp too but i'm gonna actually pull that up later because there's a bigger conversation with those guys but uh right now we're going to be talking about the most approved player of the year i think that larry market is actually the pick for me but uh, another pick that i actually would not mind uh, there's two actually um it's going to be tyrese halliburton tyrese is actually going to be one of the better players in terms of actually picking this he's what 40 assists of the last three games and he's only averaging zero turnovers for the last three games. But he's averaging, you know, what an insane turnover to uh, playmaking ratio. Like, assisted turnover ratio is crazy. And overall, I do think that he did make a very solid jump from this year to last. That being said, uh, even his numbers from last year weren't necessarily, like, the the farthest from this. So I think that the statistical improvement would definitely go to La Larry Markkinen uh, again like jumping eight points is crazy uh he's also older so i think that that would be a better thing to give it to an older player who's more established into the league larry rocker did seem to be like a person who's kind of rolling uh not he doesn't have like a solid role on any team right now he doesn't know where he probably plays the best and seeing how he plays in utah it's very good to see how he kind of has a name for himself especially with the two-point mark he's a better post player now uh, i think that he's actually improved a lot so yeah another player that could be considered for this award is actually going to be uh the guy in philadelphia we already know who i'm going to be talking about tyrese maxi very good breakout star only thing about tyrese maxi though is i think that he's really young. like he's a very young player and i would not really want to give it to a very very young player that's my only thing though paolo is my rookie of the year honestly i'm not gonna even be talking about any other rookies who could win this award i will shout out some rookies though benedict maverick is another one uh who's also putting up a monster season uh jabari smith is actually turning the quarter he's actually doing some really good stuff for, uh recently who's another one I don't know, but Paolo is still him, you know. We we just got so many good stuff with Paolo. Oh, um, Jaden Ivey. I forgot about him. But he's doing really good stuff in Detroit. But Jaden Ivey is not on the level that Paolo is. Like, Paolo is, like, legitimately one of the best rookies we've ever seen in recent memory. Like, ain't nobody doing it like him, bro. Like, once he's able to come into fruition with the type of game that he, he has, it's going to be over. Now, there's one thing I do when I talk about when it comes to uh, the six men of the year. I want to look, pull up Benedict Maverick, actually, because I'm, like, not... I'm pretty sure he's starting now. Oh, no, he hasn't started a single game now. Huh. Well, he would actually be in contention with this award, too. Uh, I do expect uh, Christian Wood to be the winner of this award, though, because... Or at least as of thus far, because I think that he's actually going to get... A little bit better of a role you know he's only played 25 game or 25 minutes per game i mean, expect that to go to like 30 when he's able to really just f come into fruition with his offensive game that being said the uh, dallas mavericks are not winning games thus far so i definitely expect him to be more of an offensive centerpiece for this team because you know i'm not sure how good their offense is right now it's you know the tool that like they can't improve from this like stuff bro i, I don't know but yeah, I do expect that Trisha Wood is going to win this award. He's averaging like an insane amount of points on the same amount of efficiency. So there's nothing really to say about that. The Lakers also have a good pick with Russell Westbrook. That being said, I'm not sure if he's actually averaging. Yeah, he, he's only started three games. But, uh, you know, he's putting up some solid stats. He's able to control the ball more that now that he's on the bench. So yeah. Brooke Lopez is actually my runaway pick for the defensive player of the year. I don't think it's close right now. Unless Jaron Jackson Jr. plays a lot and he's playing the defensive 
capacity that he's playing as of right now. He's averaging the most blocks that he's... I'm, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, yeah, let, let me put a, pull up Jared Jackson because I think that he's the only real competition for uh, dude right now because, like, some of the best defensive teams in the NBA thus far are actually, like, really good team defenses. Um, I think that people are saying that Marcus Smart is in the leaderboard. I don't think that that's anywhere near the close of my leaderboard because, first off, that team is, like, 20th in terms of defensive rating. And, two, guards, in my opinion, should not win the defensive player of the year because there's no way that well so marcus bar is definitely the best guard defender but as like a whole bigs just matter to your defense more because they are more of an interior presence a guy like marcus Smart is definitely a versatile guard defender he's able to guard one through four most of the time even some fives but like as like an overall defender you always want to guard the paint and that's where big man like brooke lopez and jared jackson jr do have like the big advantage but as we said about jared jackson he's averaging some crazy numbers uh he's right here you know averaging 3.2 blocks like he's averaging a whole block more than he did last season and on way way less fouls like if he's able to keep up this pace there's no there's no way he, uh brook lopez runs away with this award in my opinion i think that jerry jackson jr is actually another good pick the only thing about brook lopez though is he's doing the, this for 20 games jerry jackson's only been doing this for five and that's pretty much the reason why i put him that high uh, also another thing about jerry jackson is he's actually averaging a lot more rebounds but again brook lopez also averages the most contested shots in the nba uh, totals per game and honestly it's not even close it's averaging what 17 and the next closest person is like 13 it's some it's some wild so yeah now we go to the mvp and i'm going to pull up a couple of people who i think are going to be in the realistic shot of winning the mvp whether or not i believe that they should is going to be another different like discussion so yeah is that it uh i may have to pull up kevin durant too might as well um, Kevin Durant, I think we already know why he's here. He's averaging 30 points on some really good efficiency. Like, he's, Kev he's Kevin Durant. We know who he is. Uh, I don't think he's going to win, though, because he's having, like, a really low record. Now, I'm not sure if he's able to He's going to bounce back to be, like, a top four uh, seating in the NBA. And not only that, I just don't think that what he's doing is as impressive as a guy like Stephen Curry. I just think that Stephen Curry has a better case overall. Averaging more points, averaging a better efficiency. Uh, this is Stephen Curry's, in my opinion, peak year. He's averaging like a lot of assists too. Uh, I do think that he would be one of the best players in terms of winning the MVP as of right now. However, my biggest problem with Stephen Curry's case is that the defense is so low where I think that later on going on to the season, I, you know, as we progress, we're just going to see a lot more of Stephen Curry's decline in terms of uh, winning. I don't think that we're going to see as much wins on this roster. So that's going to be one thing to look at. Though I do think that this team is still going to be uh, one of the better teams in the West, even if they're like an eighth seed. I will say he does have like the, the statistical advantage over like a lot of guys. Like a guy like Nikola Jokic, in my opinion, is probably not going to win the MVP. Like even though he's putting up some like monster stats, like 60% from the field is wild. Eight uh assist nine assists is kind of wild for Nikola Jokic he's essentially a walking triple double as we know uh the only reason why I just don't think that he's gonna win is because of photo fatigue and he's not averaging like a gaudy amount of points which is something that you really need for a MVP which is why I just don't think that he's gonna win I think that the next closest person to uh Drew not Drew but uh Stephen Curry statistically is actually going to be Giannis then followed up by Jason Tatum Jason Tatum is actually a player who's taking a leap, but the thing about Jason Tatum is I think that he just lacks in comparison to the stats the other two are posting up, though I do think it's marginal, at least for him to Giannis. Giannis is probably like a decent amount worse than Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry is doing this from like the whole whole field, and he's like a, a really good point guard. He's averaging more assists. So I think that that's going to be the reason why he's going to win the MVP as of thus far. I think that Stephen Curry would be like the MVP, in my opinion. Though, I do think that, in my opinion, I would personally go for Giannis or Jason Tatum and maybe even Nikola Jokic over Stephen Curry because I do think that winning does matter. And uh, as of right now, the Golden State Warriors, while they are six or three games away from the one seed, it's not necessarily just that, you know. I think that, you know, when we combine the whole records 
they are like way way behind these two teams that that's just my opinion that and i do think that Nikola Jokic, jason tatum and uh yano santo team will improve with injuries coming back uh they're gonna get a lot more players coming back and right now seven curry's team may not be as better like as good as they are right now though i do think that some of the players are going to improve I do think that Seth Curry is the best NBA player for like the first 20 games, so don't get me wrong. So yeah, I think that that's going to be my MVP pick. So yeah, it's been your boy Nima, aka Neo, and I hope you guys are having a great one.